and welcome to the Majorly Undecided Podcast. I'm your host, Kat Klaus. In today's episode, I'm excited to introduce you to a good friend of mine that I met while combining some of my own interests. Now, as you know, in a past life, Um, Before I became a consultant, I was a costume designer, and I have a huge interest in historical garments and recreation. I'm also kind of a theater nerd, and I'm a history geek, and I became fascinated with Tudor and Elizabethan history because I love Queen Elizabeth I and Henry VIII, and I just found that entire era in England so fascinating. In my youth, I found an incredible way of combining all of my interests in theater, costume design, and history. And this struck me when I actually went to a Renaissance fair in Southern California and observed court, this recreation of a royal court. And they invited the audience to participate and learn the dances and seeing the dynamics of court. I just fell in love with it. So I joined a group that that recreated court at Renaissance fairs. My mom said I was the biggest geek ever, and I, I am. I am the biggest geek ever. It was there that in performing in Renaissance fairs across California that I first met our guest. I've watched him weave stories that captured children and adults alike. I've seen him work every day towards his passion and take that time to really learn his craft. He is an expert storyteller. Over the years, I've watched him become a powerhouse, an author, a mentor, and to really just advance his storytelling, inspiring people across the country. He has dedicated his life to the study of writing and storytelling in all forms. He holds a Bachelor's of Arts in Creative Writing from San Francisco State University and a Master's of Fine Arts in Fiction from Sierra Nevada College. His traditional storytelling shows at Renaissance fairs, uh, Celtic festivals, and geeky conventions has mesmerized audience for 30 years. When not writing, he's an avid gamer, enjoys ballroom dancing, swing, blues, and tango are his favorites, and he adores coffee. Lots and lots and lots of coffee. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to this week's guest, Todd Galloglass. Welcome. I'm really excited to share your story with our listeners today. Um, Can you tell us a little bit more about how you were in high school? Did you know that you were going to become a writer? Um, I've actually, my dream to be a writer started in fourth grade. Uh... My dad got me The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Actually, no, 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 third grade. Third grade, I wanted, I, I started writing, seriously writing in third grade when I had this creative writing assignment where we had to um, write a, sh- a story about going into the haunted house down the street. And uh, I went into the haunted house and it was actually a haunted house. And so I went back, ran back to my room into the secret, my secret hideout under the house, through my closet, grabbed my laser blaster and my lightsaber and saved my, my, my neighborhood from all the monsters in the haunted house. And I was like, I can do this in writing. Oh my gosh. And then, and then, um, I got my dad in fourth grade, uh, got me the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings. And then I was like, and now I know what I want to write. Uh, because so many, so many fantasy writers, uh, genre writers, they they basically cut their teeth on uh, C.S. Lewis, Chronicles of Narnia, <clears throat> J.R.R. Tolkien, Lord of the Rings, and um, Robert E. Howard, Conan. Those are those are the those are sort of the entry entryways. Um, at least they were for my generation. Different people ha- now because there's different. You know, the, you've got the Harry Potters and the 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 Percy Jacksons and the and all that and the Katniss Everdeen's um anyway so um that I just started writing and high school a lot of high school for me was a convenient quiet place to write where the much to the chagrin of many of my many of my teachers um uh I and and uh, it was such a quiet, convenient place for for me to write and read the stuff that I wanted to read that I never actually graduated high school. Like I I, I am I am lacking in a high school diploma. 
um, because I spent so much of high school doing the thing that I wanted to do. This is this is not um, this is not a great plan for people. Um, get your high school diploma because it will save you problems later. Um, but so do that. Uh, but but in high school, I wrote a lot, and I had a couple of teachers that encouraged me. And then um, I dropped out after my senior year because after my senior year, they had figured out that oh, he didn't actually finish his junior year, so I was going to be as an eighteen year old going into nineteen year old a junior in high school. I said, oh, and my mom told me, well, you know, you don't have to actually have a diploma to go to community college. So I went to Sacramento City College with others of my classmates, most of whom didn't know that I didn't graduate. Some of them, there was a rumor at one point that I was going to Yale for a, a liberal arts degree because I was sort of the nerdy, art, like, creative theater weirdo. So, um so then I went to, I went to community college and I had no idea what I want. I mean, I wanted to write, but I didn't, I had bought into the thing that, that, that was unattainable at that point, because you know, the whole don't quit your day job thing that so many people say to artists. So I was like, okay, well I need the quote backup. Um, and my first stint through college, which was community college for about five years off and on. Uh, I studied writing. I studied theater. I thought for a while I would be a philosophy teacher. <clears throat> One point I was going to transfer to UC Davis and um, study medieval, um, uh, do do be a medieval studies major, and then go and teach medieval studies because I was really big into Renaissance fairs and everything like that. And then school, because I didn't have a direction, school kind of petered out. And when I was 23... Um, I started dancing and it, I uh, started swing dancing really seriously as a hobby. And then at 26, I started teaching seriously during the big swing craze of the late nineties. And that kind of came, it took over. And then when that petered out, I got a job at a ballroom dance studio. And so I was still writing in that time, but the dancing was the big thing and the dancing, that's how my creative outlet and my imagination um, and I got my storytelling through, um, through that, um, through choreography and just creating physical form to the music that I was dancing to. And then in 2004, January 14th, I was rear-ended and because I was still relatively young and feeling immortal, I danced through the injury for a year. And then a year later I was on bed rest for six months. My wife at the time said, hey, why don't you go back to school and get your degree? So I went to American River College and I started looking at seriously writing again. And then I went to Sanford and from American River College. When I was at American River College, I started, I took a bunch of lit classes and it was not, those were not satisfying to me because I didn't want to talk about metaphors and hidden secrets that authors put in. I wanted to talk about why is this great writing with the lit, te with the lit teachers? What a, a, my, like the one that I like to use is what's the, because Faulkner and Hemingway are relatively contemporary of each other and they're considered these pillars of American literature, but they're writing in very different styles. And I was like, what makes them different? What about the scent? And nobody wanted to talk to me. So I started looking at schools to transfer to, and originally I was going to transfer to UC Davis, <clears throat> but their creative writing sub major for English was a bunch of lit classes and three writing electives that you had to apply to get into. Uh, whereas one of the schools that I looked at San Francisco state had an autonomous creative writing department and they had a bunch of writing classes, craft and exploration and business of writing, uh, which turned out to be a terrible class and I dropped it. But, <clears throat> um, um, but the rest of it was amazing. And then three lit electives. And I w actually wound up being able to, convince my department chair to let me take a non-lit elective for my one of my lit electives so it was all practical hands-on writing stuff and it's what i want to do and i commuted back and forth for two and a, for five semesters to get my first degree so um so i got the first degree and and 
And then I got a job out of, uh, originally out of co- the, my first college. And this was in 2009 by the time I went back. I had gone back to Renfair to do the storytelling thing to help make ends meet and pay for gas. And that kind of took off. And I was getting my creativity through that. And I had this degree and I wound up working for a company doing content writing for community development in, uh, on, uh, for online stuff. I had worked for cartoon network on one of their games. I had worked for, uh, NFL rush zone for one of their kids games. I worked for reading rainbow for a little while, which was really, really cool. Um, and all the time while I was doing this, I was working and I was, I was writing. And for about four years, I got up every day at five, wrote for two hours, took the kids to school, went to work at the online community thing. And then on the weekends I would go do Renaissance fairs and storytelling. And then the, originally my writing, I started writing, really writing and self-publishing to make a few extra bucks at my Renaissance fair storytelling shows. And then that kind of blew up like, and then I became a full, after a couple of years, I became this, a full-time writer and now full-time writer and writing teacher now that, that I got my, and then I, I <clears throat> almost 10 years after I got my BA in writing, I got my MFA in creative writing with a focus in fiction. And that was one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. And I was so rewarding that I'm back at the same institution getting my MFA in poetry <clears throat> because I'm the biggest writing nerd that you're ever going to meet. So that's kind of my, that's kind of my, my college, <laughs> my high school to college to career. With your, with your storytelling and things like that, did it start out as a way, as a creative outlet? And then you started self-publishing like you said, to make a little bit more money there, was it, but it wasn't by happenstance. It was an accident. Um, clarify. When you, when you started storytelling at Ren Fair, how did that start? So, um, I had given up doing Renaissance fairs and, but my, um, and I met my wife at a Renaissance fair in, in our mid, in my mid twenties. Um, and then we kind of stopped and had our lives and then she started doing it again. And then one day there was a Ren fair in Sacramento where we lived and I just went and I wound up because, because when I was at, I used to be the Irish storyteller back in my youth. Um, she got me to tell stories for, uh, this one camp and the one camp happened to be run by one of the co-owners of many of the Renaissance fairs in Northern California. And she was like, Hey, come to this other fair and do this. And I kind of stumbled and they paid me because when I had done it earlier in my youth, it was just pass the hat. Now it was like pass the hat and get paid. And I was like, Oh, well, okay. And so I kept doing that and I kept building an audience and, and a reputation for being prof- uh, professional and like, Oh, this act can't go on. I'll go on. I'll fill that stage time. Like just, hustle, hustle, hustle. And then, and then I heard about this self-publishing and print on demand. And so I put together a couple of books and then it just kind of snowballed and took, so I kind, most of my, like most of my creative career comes from happy accidents. But then once the accident happened, I was like, and I'm going to take this and run with it which is for, for creatives, it's so like, like I like to tell people, cause I originally first self-published in 2011 and I tell people I'm like nine years into being a 10 year overnight success. Um, be, and because of hustle and hustle and hustle. And now I'm having to, now I'm having to reinvent everything because so much of my business model before was less about marketing online and more about going to comic cons and going to events. And because I'm good in front of a crowd going and doing presentations and stuff, and then having people come back to my table and either, uh, buying books from me or people who are interested in, in writing at a deeper level, having them become students. Um, and so now I'm having to totally reinvent that because, because I'm experimenting with ways to do that online because I can't go anywhere. Pandemic and limited time now. Yeah. What advice do you have for students who are thinking about going into writing or right now are going to comic cons and doing, you know, a little fan fiction, things like that as they're looking ahead to their future? 
Well, the thing, I, I don't want to limit this specifically to, to writers because I've been a creative and I I've been a creative professional as a performer, as a dancer, as a writer, the strongest trait you can have is once you actually start on any kind of professional level is adaptability is, is cause you go, everything's changed, especially now with in the internet age, everything's changing so fast. You have to be adaptable to it. Um, you have to, and, and you have to not be, uh, I can't remember who said it, but somebody said fail better. Like, constant push boundaries and because even if because even if you don't succeed with the boundary that you're trying to push when you're networking at a comic con or or even you'll you, you'll just posting to facebook or instagram or whatever you'll have an interesting cool story to like oh this one time i tried this thing um whether it worked out or not you still have this story like and and that and like that's how we connect to people is that really we connect to people over the stories of our failures more than the stories of our, or the, the story of failures on our way to success the other thing that i'd say is especially when you're first starting out don't do stuff for because you think it's going to make you money do the things that you are going to be excited about and finish um, because, because the odds are stacked against us as creatives, it's totally possible to make a, a decent living as a creative, especially now, because you have so many different outlets for being able to put your work in front of people who will then give you love it enough to give you money, but do the thing you're excited about, do the thing that's risky on. Uh, don't let anybody tell you not to. There's an, an, an a friend of mine at a con once told me that that she was involved with this class this workshop with this really big famous writer who i won't out and her my friend and this class of high school hopeful high school writers and one kid said hey can i tell a story about ogres in space and the the big famous science fiction writer person said no you don't put ogres in space. I'm like, yes, put your ogres in space. Do the thing. Have them riding on the back of walrus whales or whatever. Like, like, like make the thing that's exciting to you. Um, because your first, your, your first forays into your, ima your imagination and tangible form are going to be pretty bad. Um, not everybody can be like, spot on when they be we we flounder and like there's sometimes when i'm like even today i look at something i'm like yeah nobody's ever gonna see that like <laughs> no <laughs> like i'm like i i was this morning i was working on a poem and i'm floundering with it i'm like yeah this isn't going anywhere this is uh this was me just oh uh, there's this thing that i'm like i'm trying to figure out how to write about it and it's just, I've tried to, I've tried to find an entry point in like three or four different poems now. And it's just like, yeah, no, maybe this is a fiction story that I need to write and write it into a fiction. You know, you're going to like, um, and there's, there's some of my recent, some of my fiction that I wrote in my MFA. I'm like, yeah, this isn't, I remember what I was trying to do when I wrote it. And I'm like, yeah, nobody's ever seen that. Um, because even now I'm still, I'm pushing boundaries and I'm trying to see where, where my next new passion is rather than writing this, the other thing. And that's one of the problems I have right now is, is I have a couple of things that I have to write to finish them because my fans want them, but also I could really use the money from the fans of these things, buying the next book and the thing. But I'm like, God, that was, that was so last decade. <laughs> I'm like, I got these other things. I'm like my, not my, my, yeah. Anyway. So, um, yeah, go with your passions and, and, and be adaptable. Those are the two big things as a working creative, do the thing you're passionate about and, and, but also, but all, and then the, actually I'll do three, uh, maintain your boundaries, like surround yourself with people that say, yes, yes. Do the thing. And, and sometimes, especially for, for your high schools, uh, your high school listeners, um, you can't always get away from the people that are trying to tell, you no. full disclosure. When I was a kid and in my, in my teens, my dad really didn't like how into fantasy I, I, I was, uh, played role-playing games and 
fantasy and imagination. And he just was, he was like, not into that. He was not into that at all and tried to get me to do other stuff. And I was like, no, this is my thing. This is my thing. This is my thing. And we wound up not talking for many years. And then at one point we kind of buried, we buried the hatchet and got, and then after I was like, then when I had the books out and we'd go out to lunch, he goes, ah, have you met my son, the author? <laughs> um, and so, so it can be challenging to kind of separate yourself from some of your naysayers. Take all that with a grain of salt because the, but find people that tell you it's okay to do your thing that encourage that because because the rest of our society right now doesn't value what we do, even though they crave it and yearn it because how many people binge watch shows, how many people look at the YouTube videos, how many people like how many people like line up to spend how many millions of dollars went back when we were going to movie theaters to see the thing like, you know, but you know, they, they want it, but they don't really value it. And so you have to value it yourself and surround yourself with people that, um, um, will encourage you. And, and, and if you create something that somebody says, Hey, this is cool. I want it. You deserve to get paid for it. Pay me, pay me and a lot of hustle, a pay me and a lot of hustle. It's the, it's, and it's the hustle and it's a labor of love. And, and you've got to hustle yourself because nobody else is going to do that. In fact, I just, a couple of weeks ago, I wrote a poem about going to Comic-Con titled hustle. (laughs) Are there any skills that you're surprised that you've developed that you didn't think that you would develop? Sales. Uh, back when I was a dance teacher, I, I, when I was working at the studio, they made me sales manager because I was the. I sold more dance lesson hours than anybody else at the studio for four, eight, eight quarters straight. And they said, yeah, you should do this. I was like, I don't know. I just, I'm just love dancing. And I love convincing other people that they should love dancing and let's have some good time with the dancing. And like most of my sales were from repeat. They were from people who came back. So I was like, oh man, what do I, how? So, and so then I started studying selling and managing and leadership. Um, and that came into play as a writer because going to the events, now I have this sales and sales is about building relationships. And most writers are like, I'm in my room doing my thing. And the podcast listeners can't see me doing the little weird thing, mimicking typing in front of my face with my fingers. Um, but, but the sales and building relationships and understanding, and this is what a lot of creatives don't understand is that, that go to events is they, they want to try and sell their, the thing they do to anybody that just walks by. And I, well, I, and the first thing that I'll ask is, Hey, what do you like to read? And if they say, Hey, I don't like to read uh, like that. I like to read this or this or this. And it's nothing that I do. I say, Oh, Hey, you want to go, but I make sure to know other creatives who do those things. So, Oh, go talk to my buddy over there. You'll love you. That's he's going to give you something that I think will blow you away. But if they say, Oh yeah, I read fantasy. I was like, Oh, well, which writers do you like? And you know, and then I, and then I have a conversation and figured out because the last thing, like, because I have the sales skill where I can get lots of people to walk away with a book. I don't want them to walk away with a book and go, why did I buy this thing? Cause then they're going to just talk smack this guy. But if, if I, if I build a relationship, especially cause a lot of people go to different conventions and I see them again, they'll remember. And I'll, I'm good with faces, not with names, but I'll remember. I say, Hey, did you go check out my buddy or whatever? And, um, and usually they come back and they give me a try. Um, and sometimes they become fans and sometimes they just go, Oh yeah, that wasn't my thing. And that's totally cool because your vision of your art isn't going to have mesh with everybody else's aesthetic, but they might tell their friends. They might tell their I friends. Do like fantasy. Yeah. Right. But that's the thing is, is the say the, the interpersonal sales, because most creatives kind of live in their own little bubble. You know, even theater people live kind of in the bubble of themselves and their characters and their method. It's, it's be understand, understand positive human interaction and, and be interested in them more than trying to make yourself be interesting. 
And I think that's important for, like you said, a lot of creatives, you have to, you have to have the sales skills. You have yeah. to be able to build those relationships and qualify your customers and know more oh. about your customers. Oh, absolutely. Well, and no, and, and then because, you know, I already said it all, but it's like knowing what you are and who and, and finding out if the person you're talking to is into the thing that you do. Any other advice for our future writers out there? Study the craft. Like that's one thing that a lot, like invest yourself in understanding how the nuts and bolts of writing works. I know it sounds really like a drag because you just want to tell your awesome stories and just vomit words onto the page. Uh, because I have studied the nuts and bolts of grammar, I can create things on the page that I never would have dreamed of beforehand. Um, and, and it's, and it goes above and beyond knowing the rules in order to break the rules. It's if you know the rules, you can, um, if, if you know the rules, then you don't have to worry about breaking them because the, you'll just make the thing happen that needs to happen in your work. And I, it doesn't matter if you want to be a journalist, if you're a poet, if you're a, if you're a fiction writer, what genre or anything like that, no nuts and bolts, the nuts and bolts grammar. Cause punctuation is amazing. Punctuation is, is you, sh you can do so much with all the various forms of punctuation. If you know what they're used, if, if you have a firm grasp of what they're used for, like, if I can throw a semicolon and an M dash into a sentence, oh my God, my work, my week is made because when I do it, but I do it and I do it with intention and I do it specifically for a specific effect that I want the reader to have. Oh, it's so good. That's such an amazing, like, uh, you know, now my, my dream is to be able to have a semicolon and M dash and an ellipses. And I haven't quite ever, I think managed to have a, se a sentence with all three of those. So maybe I'll try that later today. <laughs> <laughs> fail, fail fast, you know, fail, try it out a fail, couple different ways. Yeah. Fail fast, fail better. Fail better. Thank you so much for sharing your story and for all of your advice. Um, I, I want to, um, give you an opportunity to share a little bit about your work. We're going to, we're going to put your, all of your information in our show notes, but do you awesome. have anything coming out that our, our readers might uh, purchase or be interested in um, I or listeners just, rather readers yeah. and listeners? Yeah. I just, I just launched earlier this month. I relaunched the first book in my tears of rage series and in balance of shadow. That's an ebook on Amazon right now. Um, the one thing that I'll say is every Tuesday at 7 PM Pacific, I do a free writing class on my Twitch channel, which is, uh, twitch, www.twitch.tv slash M Gallo glass. And I'm doing one tonight, but that's a little late for your listeners, but every Tuesday at 7 PM Pacific. Um, and, uh, I, and, uh, if they follow me on Twitch, they can join in the chat and ask questions. Um, and different, different Tuesdays, different Tuesdays of every month are different themes. So, um, and they can, and people can request specific subjects that I'll talk about and everything like that. So that's for, for, and sometimes I even, I, sometimes I even talk about the business aspect of writing. So. What a great opportunity for everyone out there listening. You should definitely take him up on that to get lessons from, um, uh, an amazing writer, a professional writer who has his MFA, who knows all the structure, who has studied this craft. You can learn so much, get some tips and start diving in yourself. So thank you again for joining us. I really appreciate your time. Oh, and no, thank you for having me. It was a blast. Like, oh, I get to nerd out about writing. <laughs> like this, <laughs> like I, I actually, I like writing a lot. 
I like talking about, thinking about, and nerding out about writing just a little bit more, which is probably why I'm getting my my third degree in writing right now. So, so thank you for having me. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. I want to thank Todd for sharing his story, his advice, and to encourage you to take him up on his free writing class on Twitch. It's such an incredible opportunity. If you have any questions or a topic you'd like to see featured on the podcast, don't hesitate to email us at info at majorlyundecided.com. You can also follow us on Facebook through our Facebook and Instagram page, Majorly Undecided. And as always, you can find more resources, including our free quick guide to deciding your major on our new and improved website, majorlyundecided.com. Thank you, and we'll see you on the next episode.